Hey, what's happening? It's B-Side with the Bass Factory. Welcome to Music Theory Monday. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the bass clef. Thank you so much for joining me today. Welcome to Music Theory Monday. Every Monday, a different video to improve your music theory knowledge, because the goal around here is to help make you a better musician, and you're gonna do that by understanding music theory. So hopefully you hit that subscribe button, hit the little bell so you get notified when the videos launch, and let's dig into the bass clef. I'm gonna show you some really simple tools and how to read bass clef, and you know, but first we have to talk about what bass clef is, you need to understand what it is. Let's get started, we don't have any time to waste, let's throw the bass clef up here, bam, there you go. This is, this is it, yeah, there it is. It's, she's beautiful. Anyway, let's talk about what we have here. Now you've probably seen this before and it can be really intimidating about like you just see a lot of dots on there, especially if you look at a piece of music and there's just like all this stuff on here and you're going, okay, what in the world is happening? You know, you got all these dots and this and that and, and you're like, I don't know what's going on here. Well, let's break it down. Let's make it super simple and super easy. What we have here is lines and spaces. That's what we have. We have this little symbol right here that represents, this is bass clef. You'll see other symbols out there that would represent other clefs, but we're talking about bass clef specifically. So anytime you see this little symbol here, this guy right here with the two dots and the cool little staff hook thing there, you know this is bass clef. So everything we're talking about applies. It's standardized. It's the same everywhere. If you look at an old piece of music that that Mozart or Beethoven wrote, you know, it's gonna be the same, things haven't changed. It's the beauty of music is once you learn it, you have it for life, right? So these lines and spaces, all, each line and each space just represents a note, that's it. And they're actually logically put in order. So the line on the very bottom here is G, and then we just go, A is the space, B is the next line, C is the next space, D, E, F, G, A, okay? That's it, I mean, that's that's essentially it. Video done, I'm out of here. No, we're, we're almost done, but we're not quite. Um, this is all this represents. All the lines and spaces represent a note. Now it gets confusing because people don't talk about how it's just super logical like that. And you'll see a ton of videos and a ton of you know, articles on the internet about how to memorize the bass clef, and they'll tell you to use ridiculous little sentences like, good boys do fine always, right? And like, that's how you're gonna memorize the lines. And then you gotta memorize the spaces with all cats eat grapefruit, I don't know, something ridiculous. But the reason, you know, if you're taking a music 101 class, you just need to fill out some Scantron about what each note is, fine. Learn those silly little sentences, go fill out your Scantron, get an A in the class, and move on with your life. But in practicality, if we're talking about, we're trying to become a musician and be better at playing music and play with other people, and we're gonna show up to a rehearsal and they're gonna hand us a piece of music with bass clef on it, those little sentences don't work because you see a little dot here you know, wherever it's gonna be, and now you're like, okay, wait, all cats, okay, all cats, good, and okay, wait, this is, it, it doesn't work, because you're, you're having to recite those sentences, you're not really memorizing where the notes are, you're memorizing the sentences, and so anytime you have to find a note, you're gonna have to recite through the sentence, it's just not practical, it's not practical. So, I'm gonna show you a method that I use, more of a landmine method, to be able to quickly look at bass clef, only have to memorize four notes, on, on the clef, okay? And you'll be able to find any other note like that. Boom, boom, super fast, rapid fire, okay? So let's do this real quick. So, one of the things you have to recognize is the human brain, right? It makes it, it's really easy to memorize things that are out of the ordinary, okay? So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna look for things on the bass clef that are a little bit out of the ordinary. And the first thing that stands out to me is that we have these two dots here and there's a line between those two dots. So it's gonna be really easy for me to memorize that line, what note that line is, right? Because it's the one between the two dots. So I can go, hey, it's the one between the two dots, that's F. Bam, I got that, no problem. Like, that's an easy one to memorize. I don't need some acronym about Aunt Lucy or whatever, I just know that's F, bam. Okay, so if I see a piece of music, the line, there's a note on the line between the two dots, bam, that's F, I got that, okay. So we have that. So now let's look at a couple other lines 
that have a little that are a little bit different meaning ones at the top and ones at the bottom right so these are going to be really easy to memorize too because they're at the top and the bottom our brain is going to memorize those so as we talked about earlier that one down here is g okay and that one up here is a boom so now we've memorized those two and those are really easy so boom gfa we got that bam handled now the only other one that you're going to have to maybe work a little bit harder but there's only one so don't worry right as you see here what we have let me get rid of that real fast is we have a space here and we have a space here so what i'm looking for is this note right here the space between i wonder if that's a song i think it is i think it did really well <laughs> oh we were a little late on creating a pop hit anyway this note right here is c okay so right, G, A, B, C, okay? So if you think of the C as the note between the spaces, right? So you know the F, you know the G, the one smack in the middle of those two is C. So by just memorizing those four notes, these four notes, you can easily find any of the other notes because you're only ever more than, you're, you're never more than one little step away from the next note. And what do I mean by that? Look. If we want to know what this note is right here, this line right here, look, I'm, I'm only one step away from this C. So I don't have to go C, D, E, F. I just go C to D. Bam, it's a D. I got it. So if I'm looking at a piece of music and it's on a line I haven't memorized, I can just go one step above or below, depending on what, which, where we are here, and go, oh, well, the one above that is, or the one below that C, boom, it's D. Not a problem. Okay, let's try that again. What if we were right here? Boom. Okay, I don't know this space, but I know the line below it's G, so just one step up, bam, it's A. Not a problem, got it, awesome. Now, right here, what if, it's, what if we're here? Boom, this note. Okay, we're two steps away from the C, but look at this F, this F, this line, we're only one away. Well, I know one below the F is E, perfect. Got it, E. Right? So now I can figure out these notes super fast because I know these four. I know these four, and now I'm never more than one step away from, from figuring out what another note is. So all you have to do is remember those four, and that's it. And they each have an anomaly situation with them, which makes it easy to memorize between the dots, top, bottom, and the space between. Right, Those four things are going to help you so you can read bass clef super, super easy. Okay. Now I know what you're saying. You're saying, Hey, I see like a B C D E F, but what about C sharp? My guitar player loves playing that C sharp chord. How do I, where does that come into play? Great question. The cool thing about music notation is that note just gets modified with a symbol. So you brought up the C sharp note with your guitar player. Okay. So here's that C note right here. So if we wanted that to be C sharp, what's going to happen is we're going to put a little symbol between the before the note that represents that it's going to be sharp. And that little hashtag right there, a little I know you classical music people are probably cringing at the fact that I just called it a hashtag, but that hash right there, that this right here represents that it's going to be a sharp. So as you're reading through, you see the sharp and it's telling you ahead of time. So you read music obviously left to right. So, okay, there's a sharp, that sharp applies to the next note, sharp C. Okay, so this is gonna be a C sharp, okay? How about an E flat? What if we wanted an E flat? So this is this right here, right? That's C sharp, okay? Um, so let's get rid of that. What about, how about your piano player really likes playing those E flat notes, okay? What are you gonna see? Well, to flatten something, you just put a little B before it. And that B represents flat. So that would be an E flat, okay? It's that easy. So you just take that note, and if there's a sharp sign, if there's no sign before it, it's just the note. If you have the little hash, right? If you have the little hash, that equals sharp. If you have the little, the little B, it equals flat, okay? And boom, you can now rock the bass clef. It's that easy. So now how do you get good at it? You know, one of the things that I've recognized 
is a lot of people playing um, what we would call popular music. So whether that's rock, blues, um, country, you play on your worship team at church, whatever it is, a lot of those types of scenarios don't actually use notation, right? You don't get handed a sheet with a whole bunch of notation on it. You normally get handed a sheet with the chords above the words, right? So how do we get good at this? Well, here's what I'm gonna recommend. Jump onto Amazon, and I have a link for this below in the description, and grab a book like this. Easy Pop Bass Lines. There's a series of three of these. I'll put all three of them in the links below. They're super cheap. I think they were like eight bucks or something. And the cool thing is how Leonard is refusing to put tablature. That's right, look at that. No tablature. I don't even know what page I, look, I opened up to there. But there's no tab. It's all just bass clef. Oh, it's a thing of beauty, right? There's another one, okay? So what you're gonna wanna do is you wanna take this book and you literally just wanna transcribe. You wanna sit down on your couch, whenever, you know, and just go, oh, that note, and write whatever note it is underneath. Just write it out. And here's an example. I was, I've was i been working on um, some bass stuff for the song Hallelujah, and you'll see right here, that's exactly what I've done right there. As you can see that I just put the notes underneath, I'm getting a little bit more, hopefully you can see that, but just put the notes underneath, just working on my sight reading skills, right? Working on how quickly can I recognize what note is on that, because you need to use it a lot, and I'm being honest, like the bands I play in, none of them use this stuff, but I don't want to lose it, right? Like, it's important for me to know this, because as I'm looking at music, there's things you get from sheet music that you don't get from just having a chord above. You just It's just the truth. And it helps you become a better musician. You can have more educated conversations with other musicians. It's a thing of beauty. So there you go. That is bass clef. This is how you need to practice. So make sure you ch click that link and go get that. I'm B-Side. This is the Bass Factory. Thank you for joining me. We will talk to you soon.